up, everybody? Nick Tudoro here once again with our New York Jet Therapy session. Uh, today, I want to go over potential trade targets for the New York Jets. A re recent report came out that uh, from Rich Samini of ESPN.com that the Jets were looking to add a quote-unquote significant wide receiver to the receiving core room, receiving core room, I should say. Um, so I want to go over a couple options. I personally think uh, we'll probably end up filling this with free agency, but I do think there is some really great trade options uh, available. So I have listed a top three here that we're going to go through. So let's get right to it. First off, we have DeAndre Hopkins. Everyone knows D Hop. Um, a little bit on his stats here: six foot one, two hundred twelve pounds, thirty one years old. Uh, again, he's going to be the oldest of the trio that I'm going to list here uh, in terms of our top three options. D Hop has been producing for the last decade with all different types of quarterbacks. He's never had any issues. Um, again, the big issue with him in terms of productivity is his age and the decline. Last year, let's look at some of the stats. Last year in Tennessee, primarily run first team, he had 75 catches with 1,057 yards and seven touchdowns. Prior to that, he spent two years with the Cardinals, 64 catches, 717 yards, three touchdowns in what was a shortened year due to a suspension, I believe. And then 2021, 42 catches, 572 yards with eight touchdowns. So in terms of what he provides the offense, again, he still has proven himself as a legitimate number one uh, option on a run first team. So I think when you add in Garrett Wilson and Alan Lazard and Tyler Conklin at tight end, he just becomes a phenomenal mismatch on defenses who has great corners. The jets could arguably be the best corner tandem or trio in the NFL. And I would argue DJ Reed is going to have a tough time dealing with D hop. So in terms of his abilities, I think he'd fit this offense really well. Whether Aaron Rodgers wants him here or not, who's to say? Lastly, in terms of the financials on him, this year, if Tennessee were to trade him, they were they would actually, prior to June 1st, save $10 million in cap. We know they just got rid of Rabel. They have a new head coach that could be a very viable option for them moving forward. Next, we got Brandon Ayuk, probably going to play in the Super Bowl. San Francisco has been an offensive juggernaut for the last five-plus years since Shanahan's been there. Brandon Ayuk has been a part of that, former first-round pick um, at Arizona State. He's been phenomenal there. Some of his measurables, six foot, 201 pounds, 25 years of age. The reason I really like Brandon Ayuk is because of the situation that San Francisco has in terms of their cap. They've paid a lot of money out. They recently paid Nick Bosa. They paid Hargrove on defensive line. They've got a lot of money invested into that team. They're not going to be able to keep everybody. Ayuk is on the last year of his rookie deal. And he has performed year in, year out. Looking at his numbers, 2023, 75 catches, 1,342 yards, seven touchdowns. 2022, 78 catches eight touchdowns, 1,000 yards. So again, back-to-back 1,000-yard -back seasons in what I would call a run-first offense in San Francisco, similarly to uh, D-Hop. What I like about him is, again, in terms of the financials, San Francisco is going to need to get rid of him to save some money, and they could save $14 million if they trade him prior to June 1st. I think he could be realistically had for a potential third or fourth-round pick in a contract year. And would fit perfectly with Garrett Wilson, can both play the inside or outside. It would give this offense another dynamic option. Finally, my favorite option out of all of these in a rebuilding Washington Commanders team, Fast Terry McLaurin, 28 years old, six foot, 209 pounds. He talking about another receiver who's done it time and time again with different quarterbacks, Sam Howell. Carson Wentz, who's been awful the last few years. Um, Taylor Heineke, he's, he does it with everybody. If you look at his numbers, 79 catches, 1,000 yards, three straight 1,000-yard seasons. 79 catches last year, 77 catches in 2022, another 77 in 2021, and what I would argue was a run-first offense as well in, in, in the commanders and a team that was just 
god awful. In terms of his abilities and his contract, his contract breaks down to saving around seven seven million dollars this year for for the Commanders. Excuse me, I know it's a little uh, hard to read this here, but that money with a Washington Commander team that's going to be drafting, I think second overall this year, top five, they're going to be looking for a new quarterback. Terry's a great wide receiver, but will he fit with a, a whole new scheme, whole new quarterback? Not really sure. Um, in terms of a whole reboot in Washington, I think that makes sense. And they could probably take a third or fourth round pick for him. Again, love the options of him being a number two. He has done it as a number one wide receiver for the last three, four years in Washington. So being able to kind of reduce those responsibilities a little bit and take on the number two, and dare I say, maybe, maybe even the number three corners on some teams will create a lot of mismatches with Rodgers. Anyway.